Hi, this is Kevin from BuddyBase, and I want to show you how we can build an admin panel on top of a PostgreSQL database that you already have. At BuddyBase, we want to help you turn your data into action and get it in front of the people who need it and who can make decisions using it as quickly and easily as possible. So let's dive in. Once I log into BuddyBase, I'm going to create a new application. I'll start from scratch. I'll call this a fleet management application. Cause I'm going to manage the fleet of vehicles that may exist in a car rental business or a group of company cars that you want to keep track of. I don't need the sample data, so I'll uncheck that box and then I'll click create app. We're going to build a single page application that is data driven, which means the first thing we want to do is get the data into BuddyBase so that we can manage it. I'm going to use a PostgreSQL database. And because I'm running BuddyBase locally using Docker and my Postgres database is also running locally, I'll change the host to host.docker.internal. If you have a managed Postgres database or are hosting your database somewhere else, you'll need the connection string. The database I'm going to use is called Fleet Management. My username is Kevin and my password is Kevin. So I'll save and fetch tables and it's going to fetch these three tables that I have from my database. I've got fleet, which is my fleet of vehicles. I have check-ins, which is when each vehicle is checked in, who did it, what notes they might have, how much fuel was spent and the rest and maintenance checklists so that I can track what maintenances have happened for each of the vehicles in my fleet. So once I have the data in, it's time to start designing the experience for my users. So I'll click on the design tab. Along the left here, I have the routes that are currently set up. I only have a home route, which is currently empty and a link to that home in this nav bar at the start. I can change the routes on the right hand side. I can carry out actions when the screen loads and decide which roles have access to this page. Rather than building up my pages from scratch though, I'm going to use the add screen button and click on list view. And you can see this says create, edit and view your data in a list view screen with a side panel. So I'll click continue and I'm asked which tables, which data do I want to make a page for? And I'm going to make a page for all three of these. So I'll check them and click confirm. I'm then asked which access rule I want to use. By default, it's basic which means that we're limiting the people who can see this to logged in users. Public wouldn't require any authentication. Power and admin are both elevated roles that you can assign your users and decide how you want to use them to separate out screens or various application details based on roles. I'll leave this at basic and press done. And by doing that, a number of things happen. First, we get a screen for each of the tables that we've just seen in our database. Secondly, links to each of those screens are, are added to the top list nav bar. And thirdly, on each of those screens, we get these tables that show the data directly from the database, that are paginated and have the ability to create, read and update our data. These buttons at the top allow us to see what it would look like on desktop, tablet, and mobile. And this button at the top preview allows us to see what this would look like when it actually gets deployed. So we see a whole table. We can paginate here to get to the other details. By default, it's eight records per page. We can click on an individual record, which will show me the details of that individual record and allow me to be able to change the mileage. Maybe I drove that into work and add an extra 10 miles onto that vehicle. I can save it and it's updated. Now at the moment, this table is quite busy. This title is matching my database table for sure, but it's not what I want my users necessarily to see. And as someone using this table, I maybe don't need all this information straight away. So let's look at how we can customize this experience for our users. Back in the design tab, I'll click on the fleet table. And along the right hand side here, I have a whole host of configuration options that I can use to customize the experience for my users. First, we have the name, which is how it will appear on the left hand side. That's not user facing, so I'm not gonna focus on it. 
Next, we have the title. So I'll change this to fleet with a capital F so it looks slightly better. Where am I getting the data from? Well, I'm getting it from the fleet table, that's correct. But next I can configure columns. And that means I can sort and order the columns based on what I want to show my users. So I'll click on add all columns and I'll have a look down this list and have a think about what I want this to show. Well, I can imagine wanting to show the make, model and status. They seem important whether not they're available or unavailable, and maybe the license plate. For now, I'll just delete the rest of those and save this. And this feels like a more useful table. I've got the license plate, the make, the model, and the status. If I click on configure columns again, I can change the label to use spaces instead of underscores. That doesn't change the underlying database reference, but just changes what our users see on the front end. And that looks pretty good. It's a tidier table. I usually can click on a row and still get the full details. So that's great. In this update table, I can see a couple of things I'm not a huge fan of. First of all, it's the year that's being used as the title up here. I'm not sure I like that. And we'll think about that in a second. And secondly, I might want to, instead of underscores here, have a different way of showing these fields. So the first thing I'd like to do is to decide which column BuddyBase will use to decide on the title of each row. And I do that back in data. I go to my fleet table. And at the moment, year comes first, which is why BuddyBase is using that as the title row. But if I scroll over, I probably want the license plate to be what's going to be our deciding factor. So I'll hit these three dots and use this display column. So let's preview that. And here we have the license plate being used up top. The other thing was the field labels inside of that pop-out. So I can fix that by scrolling down and clicking this configure fields near the bottom. Again, I'll add all the columns. And then I probably do want all of these columns, but I probably want them to be more readable. I maybe want the license plate to be towards the top now. So we can reorder by grabbing those handles. We might want to add some validation to make sure that it's of the right length or in the right data format. And we might want to just sort of rename these that they look slightly better than these underscore separated phrases down here. I'm just going to change the first one and make do. So I can imagine this is the first thing that someone might want to see, what's in the fleet, what's active, what's inactive. So actually I would like the fleet link to be first. So I'm going to go to my navigation here. I'm going to click on configure links. I want the fleet to be first, and I don't want this home page anymore showing up there at all, actually. Okay, it looks good. Also, I'd like to probably fix these as well. So maintenance checklists and check-ins. We've given this fleet page some love. Let's have a look at the maintenance checklists now. And here we have some of the same problems. The table could do with a better name. Maintenance checklists. There's probably too many of the columns. So I'll add the columns. I'll think, well, what do I really want to know? I want to know the result and some reference to the vehicle. Now I want to reference the vehicle from the fleet table. And it's hard to see how to do that here. So let's go to the data. And we can see in the maintenance checklists, there is a field for fleet ID, which is a reference to the actual vehicle. So I want to actually link those two together. So there's going to be a one-to-many relationship. One vehicle can have many maintenances. So I'll go to fleet. I'll define the relationship using the ID from fleet. There's a table maintenance checklists to the column fleet underscore ID. In a destination table, I'll call it a vehicle and I'll save that. So now I've got a list of the dated checklists. That seems a good way to reference them. And over here, I've got a list of the vehicle registration plates. Awesome. So if I go back to my design tab now, see about giving love to this um, check, this maintenance checklist page. I'll click on the table, configure columns, add all columns. And that vehicle one is actually one I want to bring right to the top. I'll drag it up. Um, maybe when the check happened, I don't care about these details. Let's get rid of some of them. Maybe who did the check and the result. Probably feels like enough information for this table overview page. It's like enough information for me to be able to see. Let's have a look at it in the front end. Our maintenance checklists, click on one, looks pretty good. Out here I can see which have passed and which have failed. I can look in and get the details on, on why it might have failed. Um, it failed on electrical, so I can know what. 
what the notes might be. So we have the ability to create, read, and update our data. We can create new maintenance records by clicking on that, that. So I can say, yeah, okay, I want it to be here. The vehicle I want to reference is this vehicle down here. And I can start to go through and answer the questions in this particular uh, maintenance check. What I'm missing though, is the ability to be able to delete. So say I give this a date and then saved it. I now have a blank record here on this date and I want to delete it. So how am I going to do that? Back in my design tab, I can scroll down and where we configured the fields for the pop-out field, there's this checkbox that says show delete. And so we can decide if we want to make it possible to delete from that front end page or not, just with that checkbox. Now, when I go back to my maintenance checklists and find the one with a blank name, I can click on it and there's now a delete button here. So I click delete and confirm that, yep, I want to delete that row because it was blank. I can click on the columns. I can sort by the various dates, by the agents, by passes and fields. And that allows me to understand my data and make decisions about what I need to do next. The check-ins then are when someone arrives back with the vehicle. So it's kind of every time it gets checked in, every once in a while it has a maintenance checklist. So again, I can go ahead and make this fleet ID actually represent the vehicle and tidy up that table. So in my data tab, I want one car, have a relationship on the check-in table, have many check-ins using the fleet ID. And again, I'll call that vehicle and save. So I've got the checklists and the check-ins. Now I can, on my front end, go to the design tab, go to my check-ins, click on my table, fix the title, and configure the columns. Let's get rid of most of these details. I kind of want to know who checked it in and when, the vehicle ID, and maybe some notes. Feels like a, a good plan. But we obviously have this faulty record here. So it's give us the ability to be able to delete, scrolling down and clicking show delete here. And then we preview at the front end, check-ins, this record here, let's delete it. So we arrive with a database that already existed in PostgreSQL. We have finished with the ability to create, read, update and delete records from each table in that database to show data to our users in a way which is most useful for them and to separate out that data to different screens while still maintaining those data relationships and showing the information in a way which permits action to happen as quickly as possible. So if you have data that's gathering and building inside of a Postgres database somewhere and you want to get it in front of your users, BuddyBase allows that to happen in a quick and useful way. I hope you find this useful and we'll see you here again soon. Thanks. Bye.